Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play in television games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So before I get too far in today's video, I will need to mention that your Xbox will already need to have both dev mode and RetroArch already installed. I'm not going to be showing you that in today's video, although I will be leaving a card on screen and a link in the description down below to a previous video where I show you step by step how to do all of those things. The next thing we're also going to need to do is install a file browser on our Xbox Series S or our Xbox Series X in dev mode. Now for this process, I will be showing you in today's video. It will require us to open up the remote access for our Xbox, but I'll be showing you step by step how to do all of those things. From this point, we're going to need to load up our Xbox Series X and we're going to need to know the IP address for the remote access on the bottom right. This is what we had to use to install RetroArch previously, but we're going to need to locate back to this website again to bring over some extra files that we're going to need to play PlayStation 1 games. From this point, we're going to be opening up our web browser and we're going to be locating to the URL that we had set previously from our Xbox. I have just logged in and I'm right here right now. So for us to bring our BIOS file to RetroArch, it is technically possible to do it from the web portal. However, I've always had a lot of issues with that, so I would recommend doing it through a file browser instead. So what we're going to be doing is installing a file browser on our Xbox through the web portal so we can actually transfer our BIOS files via the USB over to our Xbox directly. So what we're going to be doing to do this is come to this link. As always, links is in the description down below. And what we're going to be doing is downloading a file explorer application that we're going to be installing on our Xbox dev portal. So come to this link, simply click download, and then your download will begin. Once your download is done, we're going to be coming back to our Xbox dev portal. We're going to be coming to the My Games and Apps on the home section right here. We're then going to be selecting the add button here and we're going to be choosing our my explorer file.appx that we just downloaded previously click open select your file select next then select start and then your file will start to install now this can take a couple of seconds before it fully installs and opens up on your xbox and just like that the file should be installed from this point to actually be able to play in television games on our xbox we are also going to need to do two more things we're going to need to have our games on an external drive that we're going to be able to read on our xbox and we're also going to be needing two bios files or extra application files that we're going to be able to bring over to use on our emulator these are what i'm going to be talking about first and i will also mention for today's video i'm not going to be sharing a download to either of these bios files you will have to get them yourself either search on google or feel free to create a dump of an existing intellivision what we're going to be doing is looking for two specific files an exe.bin and a grom.bin. An exe is the executable file that we're going to be using to actually run the files. And then the grom is going to be the graphics generation. Again, these also need to be named exactly as they are shown here. And I'll be leaving some more information about RetroArch in the description so you can actually read up specifically more about these if you need to. But you will need both of these files and we're going to need to bring both of these over to RetroArch. The next thing we're also going to be needing are ROM files or game files. Again, I won't be sharing any links, but you can feel free to create dumps of anything that you have at the moment. I will be leaving some links in the description down below that will help out with this. It's also not going to be something I'm showing in today's video. What I have right here is Centipede, my game in a .zip file. Now, thankfully with RetroArch, we can actually load games directly from a .zip file with our emulator, no problem. However, for me, I always like to extract my games. So to do this, we can do this really easily in Windows. Simply right click, click extract all, click extract, and then our game is going to extract into a .int file. And this is the other file type we can use. Typically, I will always extract my games before bringing them over to any emulator. So for this emulator, we can either use .int files or the .zip file, either will work just fine depending on what you like to do. From this point, we're ready to take our external drive with the contents we extracted earlier, our BIOS files and our game files. We're gonna be bringing them over to our Xbox and we're gonna be continuing everything from there. So once you're over on your Xbox and you've plugged in your drive, if this is your first time plugging in your drive, you might get this pop-up asking if you'd like to use it for Xbox game storage or media storage. It's really important here that you select media storage so we can add whatever files we want on here. Otherwise, if you select game storage, it will fully wipe your drive and only allow you to install Xbox games on this. So it's important that you make sure this is entered correctly and from this point, once you're open on your Xbox and in dev mode, the first thing we're going to be doing is opening up the My Files Explorer application that we have right here. And we're going to be transferring our Intellivision files from our external drive to our Xbox. 
So what we're going to be doing from this point is using our left thumbstick to move around. We're going to be hovering over removable storage devices. We're going to be clicking the A button. Here we're going to locate to where our Intellivision files are. So for me, they're in my E drive, they're in my Xbox folder, they're in my BIOS folder. And here I have my Intellivision folder right here. What I'm going to be doing is clicking A inside here. And we're going to need to transfer both of these files over to our isolated storage or more specifically our RetroArch folder. So for this, I'm going to need to multi-select and copy both of these files. To do this, we can come up here to the top right, click on the multi-select button, simply click A and you'll have to hover off it to see it's active. You can see it's slightly gray. And what we can do is select both of these files from this point. Now what we need to do is click the start button. We're gonna be clicking copy file. It's gonna be copying both of our files. We're then gonna be coming over here to the left to this device. We're gonna be hovering over isolated storage. We're gonna be clicking the A button. From this point, it'll show up as a blank screen. Don't worry, we're currently inside the My Files Explorer application. We need to come to the URL bar here at the top and we're gonna be clicking on packages. Once this loads up, we're gonna be looking for the folder that starts with 1E4C. That's gonna be the RetroArch folder. We need to select this, but before we can get in here, we need to make sure our multi-select is now deselected again. So just click A on that. Then we're gonna be clicking on our 1E4C RetroArch folder. From this point, we're then gonna be clicking on the local state folder. And here we're gonna be scrolling down. To scroll down, you can use your right thumbstick and just point down. We're then gonna be looking for our system folder right here. And we're gonna be pasting our files in here. And this is where we can put all of our BIOS files for our different consoles on RetroArch. To paste our files, we simply click the start button, hover over paste, click A, our exe.bin and our grom.bin. And that's exactly what we need. From this point, we're ready to leave my files explorer and we can open up RetroArch. So the first thing we need to do is click on the load core option here at the very top. And then we're gonna be scrolling down until we see Mattel. And here we're gonna be looking for the Mattel Intellivision here and it's a free INTV. What we need to do is click the A button here and now our core is selected. From this point, we're gonna be clicking down one more and we're gonna be clicking on load content. And now we're gonna to have to locate to where our games are downloaded. So if you're on your external drive, they'll most likely be on your E drive. And then here, all you need to do is locate to them. So I currently have my centipede.int file right here. So again, all we need to do is click the A button. Our screen will go black for a couple of seconds and then our game will start to load up and transfer over to our Xbox. And just like that, you're playing in television games on your Xbox. From this point, you should have no issue playing in television games on your Xbox. This is a really old console and the core is really well. And a couple of games I tested, I had no issues with whatsoever. From this point, what we're gonna be doing is opening up our menu. You can do this by using whatever combination you set up previously. For me, it's down and select. And here we can see all of our usual RetroArch settings, including save states, controls, cheats, and a bunch of other things. There is no actual core specific settings. Usually they're inside the options tab here. However, this core is really easy to use and it doesn't really require anything. As mentioned all the games I tried work really really well so the only thing you can feel free to play around with are the usual things with the shaders cheats and a couple of other of these things right here other than that the last thing I would recommend doing is creating a game playlist you can see I've created one here previously for the SNES it basically concatenates all of your games and combines them here into a nice list so you can really easily find them you can automatically attach a core to everything and it works really well I won't be showing you that in today's video although I'll be leaving a card on screen and a link in the description down below to a previous video where I show you how to do that it's definitely something I'd recommend and will make your experience a lot better, especially if you're using a lot of different consoles on RetroArch. Anyway guys, it's as easy as that to play in television games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching until next time as always. Keep it saucy. Peace.